You okay, Harry? Sure, mate. You okay, Harry? Sure, mate. Nico? Yes, George? This is it, Nico. Chumley's workshop. The Omega door is just inside. Okay. Let's go. I can't get the rod into the gap between the doors. Those doors look pretty solid, Nico. So does the padlock. Nico, try pulling on the doors, would you? <laughs> pull, Nico, pull. <laughs> Good thinking, George. Not very subtle, but it worked. Hey, lady, subtle costs extra. Did you feel that? Some kind of earth tremor, I think. The stone is the same shape as the slot. It must have been designed to fit. Hey, Nico! I think this is some kind of key. Something's happening. Weird, huh? A piece of stone from Paris opens a secret door in the Congo. You know, this place was built to guard something. We better watch out for traps, then. Look, Nico. Just what I need. Another dead guy. But how did he get in? We have the only key to the place. Through the roof, I guess. Well, that'll teach him to drop in uninvited. Nico? Yes, George? Look, there's an exit down there. Let's be careful, George. Something caught him by surprise. Yeah, he probably broke his neck when he fell. Think there's a story in this? Hmm. Lost civilizations, secret codes, Ancient booby traps, all pretty run-of-the-mill so far. That was a big one. That was close. Another corpse? Oh, this is making my stomach turn. There's a cloth with some kind of emblem on it. Wait, there's something inside it. I carefully unwrapped the cloth. It was a scarf embroidered with a coat of arms. Wrapped inside the scarf was a metal plate. It was decorated with a lightning symbol.
Come on, Nico. It should be safe to cross now. You'd better be right, George. Hurry, will ya? Can't hold it much longer. George? The rod had been thrown off the inventor's machine in the explosion. Nico? Yes, George? Wow! Well, that's clearly the way out. And these are clearly not ordinary floor tiles. I know this sounds crazy, but I need you to stand on those tiles for me. Sure, George. Can you stand on the fish stone, please? Hey, Nico. Can you stand on the scorpion stone, please? Can you stand on the snake stone, please? Can you stand on the bird stone, please? Hey, Nico! There aren't any pressure pads at this end. I'll go on ahead and see if I can find a way to get you through. Okay, George. I'll be here. There was a way out at the far end of the corridor, but there wasn't much floor left.
The crystal was embedded in the rock. There was no way to remove it. The crystals in the rock gave off an eerie blue light. No way could I move it. A huge slab of rock was precariously balanced on a stalagmite.
A huge crystal pointed toward the next chamber. At the other end, four smaller crystals were set inside cylindrical hollows. This one wasn't going to move anywhere. The device was clearly based on some kind of extraordinary technology. It must have been thousands of years old. There were four small protrusions at one end and three circular hollows at the other. Hey, nice. Turning the dial made the central disc rotate just like a turntable. Fantastic! The machinery floated across the floor as if it weighed no more than a feather. It wouldn't fit that way around. Not that way. The second piece moved into place perfectly. It wouldn't fit that way around. I held my breath as the final piece glided into place. Excellent! It was a touch-sensitive panel. Above the exit was a lightning symbol, just like the one in Paris.
Grasping the ring at the bottom of the pole, I was able to turn the crystal through 90 degree increments. Rotating the crystal deflected the energy beam on towards the next crystal. Operating the device reversed the direction of the energy flow. Hey, Nico. Hey, Nico, will you operate this panel a moment? Sure, George. I'd be delighted to. Okay, Nico. Ready? Three, two, one, now. You know, on our day, we're pretty damn good, Nico. Unbeatable, George. God! This is getting serious. We're gonna have to move fast, or this whole place will come down. I 
can feel the power, George. We must be close now. Through there, you think? Yep. Nico, I want you to know, if anything happens to me... Yes? Uh, you can have my Tintin collection. Thanks, George. I'm so touched. I can't see any way of opening this. It just wouldn't budge. I think it worked. Well, I can't hold the plate and get through the door at the same time. Nico? Yes, George? Hey, Nico, take this scarf. You can use it to hold the metal plate over that panel. And what will you do? I'll go through the door and check it out. There you go, George. Hurry! It was amazing. Just like the power site back in Paris. There was a column of energy. And there, again, a stone held in its beam. I wondered if this was also a key like the Omega Stone. What happened? It was like Paris, but without the bloodshed. Yeah? I got another stone. Guess what? It's got a symbol. An alpha. Stop right there, Stobart. And you. Well, Nico, if it isn't your co-star from that little show in Paris. Still giving us some performance, I see. Maybe she's stalking you. Shut up, both of you. And give me the key. The key? Oh, I'm terrible with keys. You'll have to remind me. Uh, which key was that again? Don't play games, Stobart. I know you've got it. You stole it from the safe. Oh, the key of Solomon. Why didn't you say? Give it to me. We'd love to. But... We don't actually have the key here with us. We left it back home. So, you haven't got it? No. That is a shame. A big shame. Yep. Real sorry you've had to come all this way for nothing. Oh, it's not a wasted journey. Oh, good. I was going to kill you anyway. Come on, George. Let's get out of here. That was close. You can say that again. George, we have to move fast. Harry, let's go. Where to? Grand Central. Where the hell do you think? Just get us out of here. Anyway. Now you're back, George. I'd appreciate a little business advice. I'm thinking of making a career change again. Get out of the taxi lock and into something a little more... Well, with a... <laughs> and the look on your face when the spike shot out. See what happens when you leave Andre on his own for five minutes? Nico, uh, I'm sorry, I... Andre, what happened? Some guys, they turned the place over. But why? They wanted the key. The key of Solomon. We said we didn't have it. Oh, you poor thing. Oh, it's just a couple of scratches, Andre. He'll get over it. But where's Bruno? They took him. And you let them? Now listen here, Georges. I passed out. 
<laughs> Chickened out more like. What's he doing here? When I came round, he was just here. He's been on the phone ever since. Who is he anyway? He's a pig, that's who he is. A cretin. An idiot. A smooth-faced, wooden-headed... Ah, the cop who locked you up. I have to hand it to him. He must have guts. And just what does that mean? Uh, uh, so, tell us about the fellas who beat you up, Andre. Uh, one of them was a, was a real gorilla. Uh, Flap, I think they called him. Flap? Suzaro's men. You've got a nerve. That is one of the requirements of the job, mademoiselle. I should kick you out. If you wish. Two days you kept me in the cells. So I'm told. You mean you didn't know? I was reassigned to another case. So why are you here now? Mademoiselle Collard's file was stolen from my desk. I thought she might be in danger. So whoever did this has a contact in the police? More than one. You remember the red sports car, Mademoiselle? All information regarding it has suddenly become classified. Suzaro has powerful friends, then. Suzaro? He's... a... Uh, a powerful man. A recluse. A cult leader. I wrote an article about him once. He seems to have it in for me. He certainly has influential contacts. A man answering the description of your Monsieur Ostwald was slipped through customs at the airport just hours ago. Even though he was clearly drugged, officials were told to turn a blind eye. Where were they headed? They boarded a flight to Prague. What on earth would Suzaro be doing in Eastern Europe? It is clear there is some kind of conspiracy. Not just in my department, but across the whole force. Perhaps the whole country. If Mademoiselle will permit, I would like to offer my assistance. Hmm. That is very kind of you, Inspector. No, it is not kindness. It is my duty. Maybe you can check out your databases for Suzaro. Location, history, stuff like that? Very well. I shall get on to it right away. Why didn't you tell him what's really going on? And create more suspicion for ourselves? I don't think so. This way, he thinks he's helping. What now? What if it's those thugs? I don't think they'd knock, Andre. Beatrice. Bonjour, mademoiselle. I hope you don't mind. I got your address. I need to talk. Of course. Come in. Who's this gorgeous creature, Georges? Who dug her up, you mean? What? Oh, nothing. You've never met her? Never had the pleasure. Let me introduce you. This is Georges, and this is André. Very pleased to meet you. Hi. George is American. Wow! Roswell, Kennedy, the moon landings? You got it. Three of our greatest hits. This is Beatrice. She's Vernon's, um, she was a friend of Vernon. Have you any more news? Do you know who? He was killed by a woman called Petra. She was working for some kind of secret group. White supremacist, huh? Worse, megalomaniacs. They sound scary. There's just one, really. A man called Suzaro. He controls a group that used to be known as the Neo-Templars. Vernon used to talk about the Templars. Who were they? They were founded in the Holy Land over 800 years ago, set up to protect Christian pilgrims from the Muslim armies. They grew in wealth and numbers to the point where even kings came to them for loans. But at the height of their power, they fell foul of the King of France. He rounded them up and turned them over to the Inquisition. The last Grand Master was burned alive in 1314. But you think they're still out there? Different groups, yes. And they killed my little Snooky. They did? We don't know it was the Templars who did this. They might try and kill us all. They attacked me. Look, you can see. <gasps> you poor man. But you fought them off. You are alive. You must be so brave. Foolhardy, perhaps. How about just plain fool? You're right, Beatrice. We're no longer safe here. I've moved into Vernon's old flat. You could stay with me. Sounds like a good plan. Hold on. We need to do something about Bruno. How? All we know is that he was taken to Prague. Then we should find out where in Prague he's been taken. And just how do we do that? Remember the office back in the theater? The one with the trigger-happy goon? There was obviously stuff in there worth defending. You think there could be a clue? Worth a try. I'll go. 
You shift our gear over to Beatrice's place. I'll help. And book us some tickets to Prague. Why should I do that? You're the one with the money, George. Before we go anywhere, Beatrice, there's a message on the DVD I think you should see. The cash register was jammed and wasn't going to open. Looking for old Franks wasn't going to help. The door was locked and wouldn't open. The door was locked. I wondered what they were hiding down below. As the door was locked, I realized this was my only way down. Here goes! I rifled through the briefcase, but there were just papers to do with the theatre. Nothing pointed to Cesaro's dealings in Prague. The briefcase was full of papers. Somebody had been making a quick getaway. What could be so terrifying it had made them just run away? And who was the figure in the cloak? This should keep you out of my way. Good job I had the scarf on me. Now, where was I before I was so rudely interrupted? It was some kind of security report for a private residence. Unfortunately, the report didn't include the address. Prague was certainly mentioned, but the actual location could have been anywhere. Tucked into the last pages was a photograph of a large castle. There was a dragon symbol on the back. 
There couldn't be too many castles like this in Prague. I had found enough to track down Cesaro. Is this the place? Even spookier than the photo. Sends a shiver up my spine. Sure that's not your vampire slaying genes kicking in? Sorry, George. You're out of luck. I hope Bruno's still in there. Now I'm really pissed. Look on the bright side. We don't have to worry about car chases anymore. Nico? Yes? Any ideas on how to get inside? If you were clever, you'd have brought plans of the place. Oh, I would, would I? Of course, I realize that's not your style. Obviously not yours either. No, I prefer the challenge of winging it. My feelings exactly. Besides, there's usually a solution at hand. I'm worried they might have already killed Bruno. Well, let's hope he didn't tell him too much. You're all heart, George. This castle looks really old. Medieval, George. Yeah, that too. By the way, have you and Labano... Have we what? Have you been doing that... stuff? What stuff? Boy-girl stuff. Oh, that stuff. Yeah, that stuff. Boy-girl stuff. That's what I said. Listen, George. Andre is a good friend. Yeah? So it's just a coincidence he's around again? He's an expert in ancient manuscripts. Who else was I going to call? Oh, what's wrong with the very old, very ugly experts you see all over the place? Shame we can't fix it. Let's face it, George. It wasn't exactly getaway material. Stuck on the top of the pillars was a pair of stone statues. Hmm, nice dragons. We're not on the sculpture tour, George. Just getting to grips with local culture. That wouldn't work here. What do you want? Hi. Nice evening. Clear off. Uh, I was hoping you could help me. My car. Tough. But this is private property. Get lost. Well, his interpersonal skill set needs a little work. George, did you seriously expect him to open the gate for you? Well, I certainly expected better manners. Hey, Nico, will you press this button? What do you have in mind, George? See if you can get the guard to open the gate. What do you want? Oh. Bonjour, chérie. I have a tiny problem with my car. Could you help me with it? Oh, I could help you with it, all right. You are so kind. You're French, aren't you? God, that's incredible. How did you know? Hey, you! Where are you going? Clear off! Can you try to distract them again? Look! I've already told you I can't help you! Oh, but it's so lonely out here. Just talk to me for a little while. All right, but only for a minute or two.
What's your name, cher? Boris. What's yours? Helene. Oh, that's a pretty name. So's Boris. Do you think so? Hey, you! Where are you going? Clear off! Can you try to distract them again? Hey, you! Where are you going? Clear off! Can you try to distract them again? Look, uh, Ellen, I can't keep coming out to talk to you. Just talk a little longer, please, Boris. Okay. You live in part. When I'm not on duty. Oh, let's go there. Together. You and I. We could see the sights. Have dinner. Go dancing. Walk hand in hand in the shimmering moonlight. Mm, that's unlikely to happen. What? Why not? Gets quite cloudy at night, Prague. What about your boyfriend? He's useless. I'm going to dump him anyway. Right. Trouble is, I don't think my wife would be too happy me taking a woman. I'd gotten over the first hurdle, but there were more guards inside, and some of them had dogs too.
rooting around in trash cans, one of my little foibles. Sometimes you get lucky and find a real treasure. Hey, string! You never knew when a piece of string was gonna come in handy. This trash can was empty, apart from the garbage, of course. This trash can looked promising. America's best export, a burger. I put the half-eaten burger in my pocket. Must have been some kind of urban survival instinct at work. I was pretty sure I'd seen James Bond do something clever with foil once. Trouble was, I couldn't remember what. All I could see inside were half-painted walls and a bunch of decorator stuff. All I could see inside were half-painted walls and a bunch of decorator stuff. I tried the doors, but they were locked. guards in the foyer. The building looked pretty classy inside. I could see more guards in the foyer. The building looked pretty classy inside.
Be quiet! Be quiet! What kept you? Oh, just chatting to Boris about old girlfriends. See the helicopter? Yep, Cesaro's favorite airline. George, you need to find a remote. That's how the gates work, I think. This wasn't the way in. Not this time. The button opened the gate, but it closed again when I let go. I thought about it, but decided not to do it. It was a small device with a button, maybe just the thing I was looking for. Wonderful, George. Uh-oh. Here come the guards. Let's hide. Hey, Nico. See any more guards you fancy? You owe me big time for that one, George.
Hey, Nico, will you press that button? What is it with you and buttons, George? Just keep your finger on it until I get out again, okay? I needed all the luck I could get. It was my lucky piece of coal. There was a metal handle jammed into the doors. I thought I'd take the handle. I was improvising every step of the way. The jeep descended to the ground. <sighs> the jeep still wouldn't budge. I let the handbrake off. Oops, there goes my no claims bonus. After you, Nico. This is definitely not a case of ladies first. Oh, you want me to test it out? Well, obviously. George? Whoa! Nico, watch out below! Jeez, only just made it. You were right! Of course! I'm not stupid. You're gonna have to find another way in if you can. Okay, George. I thought the bracket might come in handy. The doors were very heavy. Not this time. There was a small gap in the window, but it wouldn't open. It was awkward, but I managed to get the bracket into the gap and force the window open. Here goes. The faucet was too stiff to move. I couldn't budge it. So, this Petra, they say she's a bit of a one. Oh yes, takes pleasure in killing. Regards it as an art form. Mm, nasty. One poor guy she tortured, took him a week to die. How'd she do that then? They called it the Donor Kebab. Oh, you don't mean... Da, that's right. 
everything just the same. Apart from the salad, of course. And the pita bread? Obviously. What's she look like then? Mm, short blonde hair, that's all I know. I never got closer. Mm, don't blame you, she might get ideas. Too right. Chicken nuggets, for example. Hot dog and beans. Ouch! If they saw me, I was done for. I had to find a way to walk around without attracting attention. But for now, I had to play the quiet mouse. You hear something? Not sure. Was it from upstairs? Sounded like it. You take the side stairs and I'll go up here. If there's anyone there, we'll have them trapped. I had to hide or get caught. Did you see anything up the side stairs? Yet nothing. Stay alert anyway. This place gives me the creeps! The door was shut fast and wouldn't open. The case was filled with clothes. Lying on the top was a small hairdryer. I picked up the hairdryer. The dresser was locked. Even for an antique, the lock was sturdy. I picked up the wig. At the very least, it would stop her from using it again to impersonate me. That's interesting. The case looked a lot smaller on the inside. The base sounded hollow. I guess there was a hidden compartment inside. All I had to do was find a way of opening it. I felt around the interior, trying to access the hidden compartment. Aha! Tucked into one corner was a tiny button. Damn! My fingers were too large to press the button. Oh my god! I doubted she used the knives to open letters. I picked up the sharpening stone.
the door was shut fast and wouldn't open. A chef was cutting vegetables at a chopping board. He was struggling and didn't look too happy. Excuse me, but could you make use of this? A grindstone! Finally, somebody in this godforsaken kitchen is using a bit of initiative! Don't suppose you fancy a job as kitchen assistant? The money's crap, the hours stink, conditions are worse, but it'll make a man out of you. Uh, no thanks. <laughs> Young people today don't know which side their bread's buttered. Just one more question. How did you end up here? Give 70 people food poisoning just once, and you pay for it for the rest of your life. I must remember not to eat anything while I'm here. Now that the chef wasn't watching, I could reach the bleach. I hoped it would bleach the wig blonde. The bleach was strong. The wig's color disappeared almost instantly. The hairdryer was perfect. I fancied one of them for myself. Voila! Perfectly dry now. Showtime. Hey, who's there? Uh oh. Locked. Maybe from the other side?
Either the door was stuck or it was just locked. There's only so much you can do with a gargoyle, so I decided to leave it alone. The gargoyle was damaged by years of rain and wind. It looked as if it would fall off with just a gentle push. I'm all for conservation, but needs must if the devil drives. <clears throat> Silence. That was either a sign, or there was just no one behind the door. That door wasn't going to open. It was an old drain pipe, rusted and bent. An offshoot pipe had been blocked by an old tin cup. The old drain pipe ran up the wall, but looked like it was broken. Just as well, the pipe was wet and slimy. such a good idea.
The lamp had an old knob that I guessed was for turning it on. Ugh! Yuck! At least the knob worked. I collected a small amount of oil in the old cup. As soon as I turned the knob, the oil stopped dripping. Nope, that wouldn't work here. The grate only opened a little way. The hinges were badly rusted. There had to be a way to free those hinges. I hoped the oil would free the hinges. I could almost hear the hinges sighing with relief. Here goes. title sprang to mind. A thousand and one uses for lamp oil. Madame Petra, we didn't hear you arrive. Obviously. And did you have a pleasant journey? No. Now get back to your jobs. Both of you. Our apologies, ma'am. Security is too lax around here. Yes, ma'am. Your belongings have been taken up to your apartment. Good. Miserable bitch. Excuse me. Please, ma'am, do not interrupt me. I cannot afford mistakes. I need you to answer a few questions. What exactly is it that you are doing? I'm sorry, ma'am. I have strict instructions. To report only to Senor Suzaro until we have finished our preparations for the armillary. Yes, of course. The security door had no handle or visible way of opening it, but there was a card reader on the wall. Not right now. I needed a working keycard to open the door. some questions. Yes? Hello. I wonder if you can help me. Are you Madame Petra? That's right. How can I help you, ma'am? That's a very fierce-looking dog. Trained to kill as soon as he's released, ma'am. Good. Just don't release him near me. Understand? No, ma'am. You hear that, rascal? You're not to hurt the nice lady. Rascal? This place is a mess. I'm sorry, ma'am. I don't know you. I am Madame Petra. Isn't it obvious? Of course, ma'am. Uh, I should have realized. Who are you? 
Come on. I haven't got all day. Sergeant of security, ma'am. I am Madame Petra. I have just arrived. Of course, ma'am. I have a security card for you. Here you are. Thanks. This card required validating. Could you do that for me? Of course, ma'am. There you are. Now please excuse me, Madame Petra. I must get on with my work. Senor Suzaro will be very upset if I don't finish this. After what I'd been through to get the card, I was desperate to see what lurked down below. The washing machine slid sweetly onto the trolley. The door was locked. This was beginning to feel more and more like a prison. There had to be some way of opening the door. Well, here goes. Yes! You? Oh, why you? George? Who? It's me, Nico. Jeez, I thought you were Petra. Hmm, often sneak up on girls like that, do you? Only blondes. So it's true. They do have more fun. Hang on to the wig and find out. Trailer trash chic. Not really my style. Ouch. So how come you're down here? Did you notice the extra security? I'm guessing that Bruno must be close. So what are we waiting for? Hey, Nico. Can you do something with this lock? 
I don't have anything to open it. Where would you be without me, George? Well, this should help me move around more easily. Nico, could you turn your back, please? You are joking. I know, but it's these shorts. Not very flattering. Oh, fine. Quickly, get it over and done with. There, changed. Oh, you look nice. I bet you say that to all the guards. Ugh. Right. Here goes. Madame Petra, I wasn't informed you were back. As you can see, I am. And this is urgent. I ought to check with the front desk. You are holding me up. Now, unless you want your appendages rearranging, I suggest you open the door. Of course, ma'am. My apologies. That wouldn't work here. Hey, Nico. Yes, George? I have to admit, the blonde hair is a bit strange. Oh, really? Nobody said anything. That's because the outfit's so scary. They're all terrified of you. So, did you find Bruno? No, I don't know where he could be. I looked around upstairs and I didn't find him. He must be down here somewhere. Keep quiet and come and look at this. It's Bruno. I don't think there's anyone in there with him. Can we risk it? We've got to. Hey, Bruno. Bruno, it's Nico. And George. Hey, fellas, nice of you to drop by. Are you okay? Oh, sure. I'm thirsty, I'm hungry, I'm in constant pain. I've had more electricity through me than a small town in winter, but heck. Now you're here, who gives a damn? You're so brave. Lady, I grew up in Eastern Europe. We did torture in kindergarten. Have you told him anything? Everything. But the one thing Susaro wants, 
And what's that? Who has got the key of Solomon? But we don't know who's got it. Exactly. Well, it doesn't matter now. We're coming in to... Shh. That was the gatehouse. Petra has arrived at last. I am so pleased for you. Thank you. I find torture such a soulless task without an audience. Oh, I know. And she is so imaginative. Such a source of new ideas. I appreciate that. Yes, Bruno, I truly believe you will. And look on the bright side. When you tell us who has the key, even then we will not kill you. We need you too much. My dear girl. Has he talked yet? No, but I'm sure you will persuade him. I'm going to enjoy it. Now, Stobart and the girl. I hope you bring me good news. I found them, but I'm afraid they got away. I'm sorry. They have too much luck. That is worse, Master. Let him in. All right, boss. Not this idiot. Forgive me, sir, but there is something you must hear. Flap. Tell Senor Suzaro what you told me in Paris. What? About that nightclub? And those girls? No, no, no. About the safe. Oh, yeah. Well, it wasn't, was it? Wasn't what? Wasn't safe. Get on with it, Flap. That Stobart girl. She came back to the theater. Took some documents. What documents? A picture of a castle in Prague. This castle... Very good! Give the man a cigar! Flap! Well, sorry, sir. Wait, what is that? Do you like it? It's my new scarf. That Stobart girl left it behind in Paris. What is it? You can go, Flap. Get out! Thank you, sir. Well, Bruno, it's your lucky day. Now I know who has the key. We do not need to put Petra to work on you. You know? How? The emblem on the scarf. It is the crest of the Saint Stephen chapter of the Knights Templar. I thought they had disappeared centuries ago. Clearly not. And I know exactly where to find them. That fool flap had the answer all along, wrapped round his thick neck. Collard must be working for them. So, now we must change our plans. I shall go to Paris to retrieve the key. You take Ostwald to the armillary to prepare. Give the order that all personnel are to prepare to move out. It's time, isn't it? Yes. through to some kind of office. It could give access if the grill itself wasn't in the way. The edge of the coin was just the right size to unfasten the screws. I couldn't get through the narrow gap. Um, George, when I first knew you, that would have been no problem. Guess I must be carrying a little more muscle, huh? <laughs> yeah, the fat kind. Okay. Look, whatever I said about you in that wig, I apologize. Apology accepted. Phew. Won't make you any thinner, though. Uh, Nico? Yes? I don't like to ask, but... Would I climb through the grill and open the door from the inside? Amazing. You read my mind. You're just so predictable, George. You owe me one. That's okay. I'm not counting.
Nico, look! It's some kind of map of ley lines. See the area in the middle? It matches the diagram in Vernon's video. It seems to have its focus somewhere in Egypt. So do you think that's where they've taken Bruno? Oh, I think so. The armillary must be in Egypt. Well, that should be easy enough to find. Sure. I mean, how big can a country be? Hey, Nico. Yes, George? Where do you think that secret passage leads to? I have no idea. Could be a quick route for Cesaro to get out. Well, it's our only exit now. Going back out through the castle would be madness. It was an electronic map of the world. Ley lines were represented in red. They all merged at one point over Egypt. The desk was too heavy to move. And besides, we needed to find a way to follow after Bruno. Cesaro's desk was straight out of the megalomaniac catalog. Aha! Look at this. What is it? Secret button hidden under the edge of the desk. Maybe it opens the door. If the world ends when I press this, then I'm sorry for all the nasty things I've ever said about you. George, just get on with it. Okay, sorry. Well done, George. Let's go and rescue Bruno. Out of interest, what nasty things? Oh, you know, the usual. The usual? Go on. Andre, what are you doing here? I uh, thought I'd keep Beatrice company. Andre took me to the cinema. What did you see, Nosferatu? George. Andre, we need your help. Of course. What do you want him to do? That symbol on the scarf? Yes. Cesaro recognized it instantly. It's the coat of arms of the St. Stephen chapter of the Templars. My God. What? I always thought it was just a story. Look, Andre, tell us what you know. Tell us, Chéri. The Cistafan chapter was reputed to have escaped the Inquisition by hiding in secret chambers. Somewhere in Paris. No one knew where, though previously they had their base near the old church at Montfaucon. Maybe I can find a clue in the old Templar meeting place. What do you mean? The Templars used to meet in secret in the catacombs there. Of course. There's more. Go on. It involves the founding of the chapter. We don't have time for tales, Andre. Listen, Nico. If there's one thing I've come to realize, it's that you can't have too much information. Carry on, Andre. Thank you, Georges. <laughs> when the Templars were in possession of the Temple Mount in Israel, they discovered a holy relic. A young knight, Stéphane, was given the task of transporting it secretly to France. He traveled north through Galilee and then headed to the coast where he boarded a ship destined for the river Po. Making his way up the Po Valley, Stefan avoided known dangers to the west by heading north to the Rheingau. Pursued into France by the forces of a treasure-hunting prince, he was forced to make a stand in the mountains of Reims. Though able to dispose of his foes, he was fatally wounded. Bravely, he continued to his destination, the Berentoir Preceptory, handed the relic to the master of the chapter, then died. The order changed its name to Saint Stéphane, in honor of the brave knight, and relocated to Paris. It's like a fairy tale. Good grief. I'm going to head for Montfaucon to look for clues. Nico? You go without me, George. Andre and I will see if we can work out the exact location in Egypt. Right. Well, um, I'll see you soon then. Off you go, George. I was back in Montfaucon Square after all these years. Beneath the cobbles lay a hidden world of ancient waterways and catacombs, some of it built by the Knights Templar as a meeting place and sanctuary. Once again, I was going to have to go down there to discover the truth. <laughs>